Hello, everybody, and welcome to this brief uh, but informative webinar on the topic of protein. I am your host, Gustavo Tolosa. I am a doctor in music. And uh, for any medical questions regarding your health, you should consult your health care professional. I can teach you just about anything related to music. I can teach you how to play the piano, even online, okay? But I cannot tell you to stop and will not uh, tell you to stop taking any medications or do any procedures or stop any doing anything like that. Today, I am what I usually am, a teacher, a humble teacher who shares information, what I have learned in the last 11 years of being a whole food plant-based coach and a nutrition instructor. And um, so I am aware that the topic of where do I get my protein is a little controversial topic and I am not here to make you angry or to force you to change your mind. Those of you who know me, I'm an easygoing person. I like to study and research. I like to present that information. And then you make up your mind. Like any intelligent person trying to get to the bottom of the issue um, and finding true and sound medical and scientific research, my goal today is to encourage you to stop for a moment, listening to a hundred different voices every day and focus on reading real research, okay? Real research, not research influenced by big industries, or people that are trying to sell you any of their products. Uh, I am not um, into conspiracy theories either, and I don't particularly believe that industries and businesses want to either directly harm you or they, they don't even, I don't think they're, uh, they're into watching out for your health either, okay? They just want to make money. It is a business, and it is your responsibility to watch out for your own health. That's my belief. So I am forever grateful that I did not give up 14, 15 years ago and that I didn't give up on my health when I was so confused and that fate brought me to some information that opened my eyes and then I continued researching, questioning, learning, and I continue to do that up to today. Okay, so who do we listen to? Uh, I don't think that it is a good idea to go with I've heard that you should eat this or drink that. A Facebook post mentioned that I should do this or that. I watched a video on YouTube that told me to get enough of this or that. Nothing wrong with watching these videos and looking at posts and everything like that, okay? It's just that you must know where that information comes from. Most people don't have the time or the desire to read extensive studies after studies after studies that are peer reviewed and double blinded, that's very important, and to read the resources, I mean, sorry, to read the sources, okay? And how the study was configured. That's very important when you read studies and research and for how long and who the subjects were or who or, or what they were compared to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So good science-based information is out there, 
but we have to dig and look for it. Unfortunately, it is not easily found, but it is available. After 11 years of digging and studying and interviewing just about every uh, whole food plant-based doctor and attending lectures and medical centers, etc., I just like to share the information that I have accumulated. So what I like to do today is I have my little plan is to first listen to three of, uh, well, I, I admire and respect a lot of physicians and doctors, um, a lot of them. Um, there are three that I have a very, very, very high regard for them. And I would like for us to listen. These are not long, very short uh, clips, videos. And um, let's listen to these respected physicians. And, um, and then after we listen to them, I will summarize and uh, take a few questions. Okay, so let's get started. All right, here we go. Let me go ahead and put this and share my screen. I have this um, PowerPoint presentation, very simple. It's not long. And it's the protein myth. It's, uh, there is a lot of confusion out there. And I really feel for people that um, struggle with this uh, topic because I was there too, at one point. Um, I am the co-founder of Plantemis, which I started with Dr. Ponyman, and uh, we just want to get the information out there. I am a whole food plant-based coach. I am a doctor of musical arts. I like to call myself the plant-powered pianist. Um, for 11 years, I've been a whole food, plant-based coach and culinary instructor. I have co-written this book, which is called Live Your Healthiest Life with Shada Solimani. And it's available on Amazon with simple, easy, delicious recipes. Um, I am the co-founder of Plantemus International and that's plantemus.com. And I am a certified starch solution coach by the McDougall Health and Medical Center. And I am a certified instruction, nutrition instructor by the Food Saves Me Institute. So the sources of where we get the information is very important. Who do we listen to? Where do we get the information? And if you wanted to start learning how to read medical and scientific research and how to know whether what you're reading is um, real or it's uh, influenced by business. So what do the experts say? Let's go back here and um, let's listen to a friend and mentor of mine for 11 years. He recently passed away. He lived uh, a long and very productive life. And uh, like um, Jane Esselstyn says, he uh, lived long and died fast without suffering. Okay, this is Dr. John McDougall, um, a very dear friend. We did hundreds and hundreds of uh, webinars. They are in on his website, drmcdougall.com, and in my YouTube channel as well. He has a few very wise words for us when it comes to um, when it comes to protein. So let's listen to him. And then um, we'll, we'll listen to two others. Again, these are short videos. And then I'll tell you, um, I'll give you a little more info. Okay, so here we go with Dr. McDougall. Protein, protein. Everybody's like, oh, it's protein. You know, most of the gurus out there are recommending more protein, more, but stay away from carbs. Okay? Well, if you don't eat carbs, what are you going to eat? You're going to eat fat and protein. 
And some of the people that are in these low carb movements, they didn't realize fat's not so good for you. So they hit the protein really heavily. You walk into a grocery store, a natural food store, a pharmacy. And what do you see advertised on the labels of products from everything? I'm surprised they don't have laundry detergent advertised as higher low protein. Everything's got a pro and they sell more protein, the better. And so what do you think? But protein is the most important nutrient to the human being. When I was raised as a child, my parents believed that. They believed that uh, as long as I got enough calcium and got enough protein, I'd be just fine. So guess what they fed me? Yeah. Yeah. Guess why I had terrible stomach problems. That's why I lost my tonsils. Guess why I had a stroke when I was 18. Guess why I weighed 90 pounds more than I weigh now? Because my parents believed in calcium and protein. All right, let's start at the beginning. How many cases of protein deficiency have you found? Your, your sister have it? Your mom? How about, how about your best friend at the bowling alley? They got protein deficiency. They go to the doctor to get some protein supplements to solve their high blood pressure, diabetes, et cetera. And did you see them cured by taking these pro- all this extra protein, did you? You've never, ever, ever, ever seen dietary protein deficiency. It doesn't exist. The, the protein requirements for a human being are so low that even in the 1800s, scientists knew that you couldn't design a diet that was too low in protein. But all, all we do is we fixate on protein. Well, there's a lot of money in protein. Not, not, not just in selling high protein foods, which you've identified as expensive foods like the dairy and eggs and meat, fish and chicken. These are the high, the high income makers, the, the real profitable foods. Look at the rundown that happens. The, look at the, the downhill benefits financially that occur. Well, you, you're feeding people high protein diets, so you're making the pharmacies rich. And then the drug company's rich and you're making the doctors rich and all their ancillary personnel, they're getting rich and the hospitals, they're getting rich. You know, this is a tremendous business generator to the lie to the public when they've never seen a case of protein deficiency yet. They're all trying to stamp up protein deficiency by buying all these high protein products. This is detrimental. You know, when you when, when you take in enough protein to supply your needs, uh, you've got to deal with the excess. You need a little protein. Yeah, a little protein got kind of replaced a few hairs and a few skin cells and a few gut cells. And you know, as long as you're not growing, you, know, you need a little extra protein when you grow, but not much. It's a tiny bit, just a tiny bit to grow a baby or to grow as a child, just a little bit extra. You always, always the food beats it. You don't have to worry about it. But after you've supplied these basic needs for protein, which amounts to about a diet of about 3%. Let me say that again, three, you know, like one, two, three, 3% of the calories that need to be from protein. That's it. All right. But we are focused on high protein foods, diets, products, et cetera. So we're taking a, a lot of extra protein. What, what happens to that extra protein? It has to be gotten rid of because it's not stored. If it was stored, it would be stored in your muscles and you'd have these huge muscles and you'd look like a bodybuilder. Not the case. So it is processed through the liver and through the kidneys and it comes out in the urine. That's where your protein ends up in the urine. And um, some of it in the gut, but most of it in the urine, that's where it goes. In the process, you overwork the liver and the kidneys. Uh, you create a condition uh, which is an acid condition in the body. We call it acidosis. To neutralize this acidosis, you have to dissolve the bones. And there's the first step in giving you weak bones or osteoporosis. And then the bones which are being destroyed by the acid from the protein. Well, you know, protein has a bunch of acid in it, don't you? You know, protein made of amino acids. Oh, come on. You've heard about that. So you're eating all this acid. And, and what happens is uh, you end up not only destroying the bones, but you end up making Kidney stones. You also base kidney stones. Yeah, you do. And plus, think about the foods that you're being encouraged to eat that are high protein. They're the very foods that you've heard are the source of most of our environmental pollution. That's right. Uh, these the animal products, because they're high on the food chain, are just loaded with DDT, pesticides, all kinds of poisons from the environment. So you're focusing on those kinds of foods. You're focused on the foods that cause autoimmune diseases, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and, and uh, multiple sclerosis and so on are, are caused by a confusion that occurs between the animals we eat and the animals we are. Body gets confused and it, it, it starts attacking us when it should be attacking the foreign food proteins only, but it's not. So you get all these autoimmune diseases. Uh, the kind of foods that they recommend are high in fat, high in cholesterol. Well, you know what that leads to, right? Strokes and heart attacks. You know that. And it's low in dietary fiber. And you know the problem there? Constipation. 
So, you know, it, it, it goes beyond just the protein, which we isolated out in this discussion. It's the fact that the vehicles that carry the protein around are themselves deleterious. Infections, they carry infections. We catch, we catch salmonella and E. coli, staphylococci from other animals because we're an animal. The, the microbes can cross between animals. We don't really catch plant diseases. You don't catch tobacco mosaic virus or Dutch elm disease or aphids. You don't catch those things. Those are plant diseases. So, you know, you're, you're taking on a big bargain when you believe in the protein myth. And besides that, just as an end note, I'll, I'll tell you what my challenge is for you. If you develop protein deficiency by any means, except starvation or experimental diet, if you develop protein deficiency on any natural diet, I want you to tell me first, because I want to be the one that reports it to the news, to the scientific journals. Dr. McDougall discovers the first case ever of dietary protein deficiency. You know, who knows? I'll, I'll, I'll go down to as famous as Louis Pasteur or, or Semmelweis or you know, somebody else debating, discovered a case of protein deficiency. Let's listen to another great doctor, Dr. Michael Clapper. Dr. Michael Clapper used to be my doctor also, as Dr. McDougall used to be, uh, when I attended the um, True North Health and Medical Center. Uh, and Dr. Clapper is alive, and now his mission is to go to medical schools and give lectures to medical students who get little or no nutritional information in their careers. Um, so his mission is to go and give lectures in medical schools nowadays. Of course, he continues with his medical career as well. But um, to, to let uh, these future physicians know that a lot of our current illnesses are dietary um, problems. So he has um, a few words here. Um, that are very important for us to listen to. So let me go to this one. Then we have one more short one, and then I'll uh, I'll summarize and give you um, a few other little bits of information. And if you have questions, we can we can talk. So this is Dr. Michael Clapper, whom uh, who I respect and admire. Tremendously. I have also interviewed him and um, he's just um, wonderful. So here we go. Let's listen to Dr. Michael, uh, Michael Clapper. Okay, here we go. All right. Today, our viewer question actually um, has been asked more than once by, you know, more than one person. So lots of viewers have reached out asking um, if you have recommendations regarding protein or other foods for maximum muscle growth as a vegan. I get this question a lot. And there is more myth than science around it. Let me drill down on this a bit. We've made this association, or it's been made for us by the marketing folder. Protein equals muscles, and uh, if you're if you want to build those big muscles, man, you got to eat lots of protein. Uh, though every gorilla I know has lots of muscles, every giraffe and buffalo and elephant, and they, they, I've never had one ask me where where do they get their protein, and because it's in whole plant foods, and if you're eating a whole plant food plant-based diet, uh, and you're eating enough to keep your weight steady, if you're eating 1,800, 2,000 calories of whole plant food with these protein-rich grains and legumes, beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils, if you're clipping along at 1,800, 2,000 calories, you're getting 50, 60, 70 grams of high-grade protein there, and it's more than enough to meet anybody's needs to keep you healthy, make all your albumin and collagen and all the proteins in your body. That said, the bodybuilders still have this idea that you know, everybody likes to protein, lots of protein, if I want those big muscles. And the danger in that is that high protein diets, you could go over 90, 100 grams of protein a day, then that is not healthy for your kidneys. It makes the kidneys shift into a gear called hyperfiltration that damages the kidneys. You have these high protein diets 
sustained month after month, year after year, in my opinion, are a ticket to the dialysis unit. And, um, and I've seen decreased kidney function in these bodybuilders who, they, after a big workout, go down and make up a smoothie and for 30 grams, 50 grams of, of well, they either use whey protein, which is a dairy-based protein, but even the pea proteins and the plant-based proteins, you know, for 30 grams of that, that jolts the kidneys. That, when, when you eat a whole bean, and whole lentils. It takes hours after chewing them up and swallowing them for your digestive enzymes to get into the piece of lentil and the piece of uh, lima bean to uh, start uh, dissolving the, the protein strands, holding the the uh, the, uh, I mean, sorry, the fiber strands, the carbohydrates, holding the, the protein in, in place. And then for the protease enzymes to come in and, and start breaking the proteins apart into amino acids. And as a result, after a meal of whole beans, whole lentils, uh, the amount of amino acids rises very gently and gradually. It's cleared out uh, by liver and kidneys without a lot of problem. But you use these protein powders, even the vegan powders, and they leap into your bloodstream and they slam into the kidney glomeruli and uh, they create that hyperfiltration state that's not healthy. So I'm not a big fan of those. Uh, now, there might be a way to use them that we'll talk about in a minute. But, uh, you know, I was only half joking about the elephants and the, and the giraffes. The uh, the, the protein in plant foods is enough to make a tremendous amount of mammalian muscle. And where that really happens is in the gym. You, you, you want big muscles, man, you got to sweat for them. And you do those repetitions uh, and those sets. And, and uh, a moderate amount of protein really is sufficient to build you know, spectacular muscles. Uh, but that said, uh, there's a fine line to walk from the bodybuilding literature I read, especially the vegan bodybuilders. Um, they, um, uh, they say be generous with the protein. They like to be up at that, that 60, 70, 80 gram, 90 gram uh, level. But again, it should be from whole foods, an extra scoop or two of bean chili, an extra hummus sandwich, uh, an extra scoop or two of lentil stew. Uh, try and get it from whole plant foods. The, the extra 10, 15 grams of protein that you that you might need for the, for your post workout protein. You get you know, get it out of whole whole foods to the greatest extent possible, rather than these powders. Uh, a friend of mine who's well, very knowledgeable about vegan bodybuilding, uh, Mr. Robert Cheek. I highly recommend his book and his website. Uh, it's called Shredded, and uh, uh, and Robert used to use um, uh, plant uh, protein powders. He's backed off of that. He's aware of the uh, uh, of the uh, kidney ramifications of that. Now, if someone is on a state where they've just were recovering from surgery or they need uh, extra protein for some medical reason. Again, I would prefer that they get it out of whole plant foods, but if say they're post-operative, they have trouble uh, chewing or whatever, um, uh, here's a place where again, a, a smoothie uh, would, would work and a scoop or two of the protein powder there may have an indication, but, it, but that sits slowly over the day. You don't chug like that uh, right down and, and bang into your kidneys. So you can put that extra 15 grams of protein in a smoothie, but sip it all morning. Don't don't chug like that thing right down. Be gentle with your liver and your kidneys. So, not being an expert on vegan bodybuilding, I will refer you to the people who are. So, I urge you to go to the website of uh, Robert Cheek and then the other vegan bodybuilders. Just Google vegan bodybuilders and go to the website and check them out. But just stay away from those, those high potency protein powders. Get it out of whole foods, eat more beans and chickpeas and lentils and green peas, uh, lots of quinoa and whole grains. That's the place to get your protein. And, but uh, again, it's not a, a matter of eating a lot of protein and having your muscles suddenly bulge any more than eating some brains and getting smarter. It doesn't work like that. So, uh, so uh, eat whole plant foods. Do lots of sweating in the gym, and you'll be happy with the muscles that you get from that, and you'll stay out of the dialysis unit, which I hope for everyone.
And finally, we're going to listen to another wonderful doctor. This is even a shorter video. This is Dr. Neil Barnard. Uh, he, he sees patients. He, um, um, he teaches at a medical school, and he is the president of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. All of these doctors uh, uh, tell you basically the same thing, but in different styles. So I really like Dr. Neil Barnard, and I have also interviewed him. He's a very gentle and patient um, doctor, and I would, this is just barely, not even four minutes. So let's listen to Dr. Neil Barnard here. You've been changing your diet. You've gone to a totally plant-based vegan diet. Good for you. That's fantastic. But you know what? Your friends are asking you the same question, aren't they? They're asking, where do you get your protein? Or if you're new to this, you might be asking that yourself. Where am I going to get protein on a plant-based diet? Or maybe you've been Googling and you've Googled plant-based protein sources, and that's what landed you here. Well, we've got some answers for you. The truth is, if you've just started a completely healthy plant-based diet, you might be at risk of developing a condition that I call protein anxiety. But that actually means that you're not protein deficient, but you are worried. You're worried about getting enough protein. You might not be sure what protein is, but you're afraid you're not going to get it. Well, let me put your mind at ease. Protein is widely available. It's in beans, it's in vegetables, it's in grains. And protein deficiency is really virtually unheard of if you're getting any normal combination of those healthy plant-based foods. All right, a few numbers. How much protein do you need? The government would say about 0 0.4 grams per pound of your body weight, or if you're going metric, 0 0.8 grams per kilogram. What that means is an average woman needs about 46 grams a day. A man, all at 56. But if you actually look at the numbers, most people get about twice that amount. And even those numbers, a little bit generous. Now, you might be thinking, well, a little protein is good. A lot has got to be better. No, I'm sorry to say it's not true. If you're really indulging in animal protein, what's coming along with it? Fat, cholesterol, occasional salmonella. No, you don't need that extra protein. Your body can't use it, and neither can you. Okay, so where am I going to get protein from plants? Okay, more numbers. Let's say you're eating a typical 2,000 calorie diet, which is about normal for a typical person. Well, if all I ate was broccoli for a whole day, 2,000 calories would give me 146 grams of pure protein. If I ate 2,000 calories a day of nothing but lentils, not that you'd ever do this, but you'd get 157 grams of pure protein. So hopefully you're not having just broccoli or just lentils. If you're eating any variety of, of plant foods, you're getting protein-rich sources from all of them, including all of the essential amino acids that your body needs to make protein of itself. So as long as you're eating enough calories, you're getting enough protein. And that's also true for athletes. Athletes do need more protein. That's true. But what do they do to get more protein? They eat more food, and protein comes along with it. They're breathing more. They're getting more oxygen as they're running. They're eating more. They're getting more protein. Now, wait a minute. You might have heard somebody talk about essential amino acids, which I mentioned just briefly. Well, essential amino acids are building blocks that your, your body uses to make protein, but they are found in plants. Plants have all the essential amino acids that you need. And when you combine foods like rice and beans, you get all the best of all these different plant sources. So protein anxiety, let it go. On a healthy plant-based diet, you're getting not just away from the bad things like fat and cholesterol, but you're getting into healthy foods, vitamins, minerals, and yes, plenty of protein to meet your needs. Have at it. All right. Well, I, I really wanted you to see that because what better than to listen to actual physicians and doctors? Let's go back here to my little um, uh, PowerPoint that I was showing you. 
And well, and then if you have any questions, I'll take questions. And here we go. Okay. So we just watched those uh, doctors and um, I'm going to say, let's relax a little. Okay. <laughs> let's relax a little. Uh, for now, if you're eating enough calories, you're getting enough protein, as you heard these doctors say. I won't say relax if you have heart disease or if you're diabetic or if you have cancer. You know, you've really got to look at your diet and then, of course, consult with your doctor. But let's relax a little about protein because we really need to be open minded. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that you need to change your beliefs right now. Let's be a little open-minded and start reading real medical and scientific research that is peer-reviewed and um, uh, double-blinded. Okay, so can too much protein be toxic? Well, uh, the, the, common, the common thought process goes like this. If something is good, then a lot of it must be better. Unfortunately, that's not true with a lot of things, not just protein. Being in the sun is good and necessary for the production of vitamin D, which of course, you know, it's not a vitamin, it's a hormone, but we need. What happens if I am in the sun three hours? Well, I will, you know, I'm gonna be at risk of skin cancer. Uh, what about if I take too much vitamin D or if I don't have a doctor that is monitoring the levels and it's not adjusting? Well, vitamin D, if you research it, can be toxic because it's a sort of a hormone. So just because it's good, it doesn't mean that a lot of it is better. Can you, do you know that you could actually die if you had too much water. Of course, we know that water is uh, essential. And in my seven day program, we uh, focus for one week of eating, you know, in eating whole food, plant-based, intact fiber and water. But just because water is good, I'm not going to drink 50 glasses of water. I can develop a condition that is serious. Same thing is true with sodium. We need sodium for certain functions in our bodies, but if I have too much sodium, we know what it does to our arteries. We know that it will hold on to fluid, will gain weight, our blood pressure will go up and many other things. And the same thing with protein, just because it's good, it does not mean that I can have um, unlimited amounts because of the uh, extra work that it puts on our kidneys and liver. And we certainly don't want the nightmare uh, and the, the real, the, the help that you have to go through uh, when, if you ever develop, you know, have to have dialysis because your kidneys are destroyed. So here are some facts. Let's go to let's go to facts. So let's set our emotions aside. So most people, we're talking about in general, lose about three grams of protein uh, per day through shedding skin or the intestine and other miscellaneous uh, losses. This is uh, in the Journal of Nutrition, June 1971. And this doesn't change because this is uh, how we humans are. <laughs> okay, to, to this, we add other physiological requirements such as growth and repairs. And the final tally shows, based on solid scientific research, a total daily protein requirement of about 20 to 30 grams is enough but we can go a little bit over. So these are the protein recommendations. This is what the United States Department of Agriculture and the World Health Organization 
and many other international health organizations recommend for protein levels ranging anywhere from 33 to 71 grams. And I have converted it so that you, if you don't use metric, is 1.16 to two two and a half ounces per day for adult men and women. The typical Western diet with a lot of ultra processed foods and a lot more animal foods than let's say 200 years ago, uh, the Western, typical Western diet brings 100 to 160 grams per day. And of course, if you're following or know someone who's following a high protein diet, you are getting, or the person is getting anywhere from two to 400 grams per day. That has to be disposed of. Our bodies, I don't know if you know this, um, uh, this is this is crucial information. You can look for it. Don't trust me or these doctors that we heard. Look for it. Our bodies, when they get what they need per day, which is any about 70, 50, 70 grams of protein a day, any extra cannot be stored. It has to be taken out by the kidneys and the kidneys have to work extra hard every minute of the day. And that damages the function of the kidneys. Okay, so a few examples, but again, don't trust me. Uh, I always go and look, go and research. You have nutritional websites, you have nutritional apps. You can nowadays, it's easy to find how much uh, of anything is in any food. So based on a 3000 calorie diet, okay, look at this. If you ate corn, okay, uh, and this is grams per day, uh, you would get 109 grams of uh, of uh, protein, brown rice, 64, oatmeal, 108. What Beans have a lot of protein. Actually, beans have the same or more protein than meat without the cholesterol, without the saturated fats, without the antibiotics, without uh, uh, hormones. Okay, potatoes have 82, sweet potatoes less, 45, Asparagus, 330 grams of protein if you ate 3,000 calories of asparagus. Broccoli, 338, tomatoes, 150, and so on. We could list on and on and on plant sources of protein. Of course, none of us are going to eat 3,000 calories of just broccoli or asparagus. The idea here is to show you that if you eat enough calories, anywhere from 2,000 to 2,500 calories a day, depending, of course, on, on each person, and you eat any variety of these uh, vegetables and grains, uh, you will have all of your protein requirements. This is what the American Heart Association uh, published in 2011, not long ago. They published, you don't need to eat foods from animals to have enough protein in your diet. If you do, fine, no problem, okay? Uh, if you're not following a whole food plant-based diet, uh, okay, but it's not necessary. All of our protein and amino acids are present in the plant kingdom. Okay. Uh, John McDougall, MD, in his famous book, he has 11 or 12 New York best selling books. This is the most brilliant book ever. It's called The Starch Solution. Uh, in one of the pages here, he says whole grains, legumes, vegetables, seeds, and nuts all contain both 
essential and non-essential amino acids. Uh, again, you know, Dr. Clapper mentioned this. I don't, I think Dr. Mazzullo may have mentioned it. Um, big, huge animals like elephants, hippopotamuses, giraffes, cows, and many others that are actually plant-based get all of their muscles and growth uh, just for plants. Okay, so if plants can satisfy the demands of these enormous animals, wouldn't you think they could easily meet our own protein needs? Indeed, they can and they do. Uh, all of the unrefined, and I capitalize unrefined because we're not talking about cookies, we're not talking about cakes and candy bars, we're talking about starches. Starches like sweet potatoes, rice, beans, things that are whole, unrefined starches and green and yellow and orange vegetables are perfectly calibrated by nature, okay? To these, they have been designed to meet our protein needs. So long as we eat enough of them to satisfy our calorie requirements, our energy requirements. Okay, so uh, that is basically what I wanted to show you, maybe just to put you at ease enough so that you could put aside any fear you may have and just do a little reading, a little studying, uh, go to real sources, not what someone said or what someone, you know, this video or that post really really go, if you need help finding real research, you can email me. I can point you in the right directions. Any of these uh, books uh, that I have featured in my book club, that they are uh, in my YouTube channel, they all have in the back a list of references with all of the studies in medical journals. Uh, all of these doctors that you saw today, they actually have published research in medical journals that your doctor actually probably gets. I don't know if they read it, but they are there. Okay, so uh, would you please post the slide again with the three doctors and their links? Yes, what I'm going to do is I will send uh, the replay. I will send you all an email just make sure that you look in your spam box or in your promotions box or in any other box or folder because sometimes my emails may be redirected to something else and not land in your inbox. But I will send you an email with the link of the replay of this and I will also post these links so that you have them for reference. Okay, so. What is important here is to understand what protein is, and it's a bunch of amino acids that the body get, you know, uh, uh, complex processes, and then we get the protein. Um, we need to know where to get it. Um, we can actually get clean protein without the addition, like I said, of saturated fat and hormones and antibiotics and other toxins. We can get it for plants, not the I mean, plants are also now may have been sprayed with toxins. We live in a world that everything is, you know, is there's there are toxins everywhere. But if we can minimize them, better. If you don't want to be a 100% whole food, plant-based, you know, person eater, uh, okay. But just find a balance. Find a balance. I think the what well, well, we need to take out of this presentation from these um, re reputable doctors and um, from what I'm passing on to you is the danger of excess protein. Uh, fat, excess fat is stored in our fat tissue, unfortunately. Human beings are designed to be fat storing machines because of where we come from and uh, we needed to be prepared for times of famine. Now they seldom or never happen. So we store fat. 
Um, in the case of having too much, uh, too many carbohydrates, not, um, you know, we're talking about unrefined carbohydrates, uh, healthy ones, you know, they may be stored as a glycogen um, in the liver uh, or under the skin or just burned off as heat because it's the first fuel that the body burns. But um, but when we're talking about uh, what we're talking today, <laughs> okay, uh, when, when uh, sorry about that, I, I saw a message here and I got distracted. When we're talking about protein, um, that's a different that's a different story. When we're talking about protein, our bodies are not designed to hold on to it. It's on. It's designed to use it for the needs of the day, which you saw is very little, and the rest of it has to be taken out. And really the only, the, the most efficient way is through the urine and the uh, kidneys are working extra hard. Most of us by the age of 70, 70 years old have lost about 30% of kidney function, that's just normal and we can function perfectly fine. But in a very high protein based diet, that can go past 50% and will land you, uh, like Dr. Clapper said, in the dialysis unit, which is something that we really don't want to experience. All right, tomorrow, let me tell you something, a little surprise. If you keep this link that you use today, tomorrow I'm going to do a follow-up. And I love pictures. I don't know about you. I am a, a teacher that when I when I teach, I, I like uh, photos and pictures. So tomorrow I'm going to do another uh, free webinar like today at the same time with the same link. But tomorrow I'm going to show you photos of the most delicious mouth-watering meals, simple meals, inexpensive meals that you can make, enjoy, lose some pounds because they are whole food, plant-based, and so the calorie content and the fat content is low, but they have all the protein you need. So tomorrow it's going to be a fun webinar where we're just going to look at uh, pictures. Make sure you eat beforehand or you're going to get hungry, okay? Uh, but uh, keep the link. And um, I just want to mention a couple of things here. So that's tomorrow. On Thursday, if you keep the same link again, uh, I'm going to do a life-saving webinar with Catherine Lawrence from Food Saved Me Institute. She is going to give us a lesson on ovarian cancer. September is ovarian cancer month, and uh, she has um, researched this very much. Um, it's a topic that she's passionate about. Even if you're not a woman, you're a man, you might have a, a, a wife or a daughter or a friend or somebody that you know, and this information is going to be um, crucial. This is new, uh, new studies, new research. So I encourage you to log in using the same link on Thursday this week to watch the ovarian cancer webinar. And this week also, I will let you know by email um, Shada, my friend Shada and I, who wrote this book together, uh, we were interviewed by uh, Rip Esselstyn, Dr. Esselstyn's son, about uh, the book and about our stories of how we lost uh, together uh, close to 200 pounds and have kept it off and what our strategies are and what our simple meals are. This is a cookbook with simple meals from the Persian meals, Argen meals from Argentina, from the US, Mexico, uh, Spain, Italy, and it tells our story. So it's a storybook. And as you read our stories, which I hope that you'll enjoy, they're, they're very uh, uh, full of, um, uh, well, they're funny and sometimes, sometimes and they're not so, uh, but it's our stories. And our stories, as our stories develop, 
Um, we have inserted recipes from our mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers, very unique recipes. This book is available on Amazon. So if you go to amazon.com and type uh, the Live Your Healthiest Life, you can get uh, our book. And um, let's see uh, what else I wanted to mention. Um, yeah, my, my YouTube channel is called Plantemus, um, which is like this, okay? Plantemus.com. That's that's my website. Um, okay, uh, the YouTube is under Plantemus. My uh, Facebook is under Dr. Starch, my Instagram. So uh, I have a lot of information, guys, just about everything that I do is to help you get the information that you need and it's free. And so in, in my YouTube channel, you have cooking demos, you have interviews with many of these doctors, you have programs like uh, the five day soup program that I just finished with recipes. And uh, so take advantage because it's free. The only thing that I charge for, well, besides the book here, is my seven day detox reboot and reset program. It's very fun. Uh, people do get uh, fast results. If you've gotten a little bit off the wagon and uh, or confused in during seven days, we log in twice a day live uh, or you can watch the replay. And we just learn how to make simple meals. I do mini lectures. We have group support and I'm starting one next Monday. Uh, September 23rd. You can sign up by going to my website here, plantemus.com, then click on uh, webinars and go to live workshops. And I would love it for you to join us. It's a, it's a really um, unique experience. Okay, uh, let's see what else if I need any other. Uh, it is a great cookbook to read. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And look, recipes. Any questions, please? Any questions? Any comments, um, anything that I can clarify? I'll, I always say, if I don't have the answer, I'm not going to make it up. Um, I do have good sources uh, where I can get the answers. Um, I'll get the answers for you. You can either type a question or a comment, or you can unmute your microphone and talk. Just remember that it's being recorded. And... Um, if not, have a wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you are. And remember, we want whole, whole food. This is a whole food. Orange juice is healthy, but I've taken a lot of the fiber out. And fiber uh, regulates blood sugar and it helps with uh, detoxifying. If I make apple juice, same thing. If I, or if I dry it up and make chips, the water is out. Okay, uh, sweet potato. Let's focus on learning how to enjoy and combine these whole foods, potatoes. You know, this is whole food. When you cut this and make chips, it's not a whole food anymore. All right, so thank you very much for coming and watching this webinar. And uh, I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, everyone.